Hello, hello, hello. Let's get this show on the road. Wow, we have a lot of people turning up today. It's awesome to see uh to to see everyone and I'm absolutely delighted to uh to be hosting this event and kicking off what I reckon's going to be an uh, I'm not going to jump to any conclusions but probably uh, an ongoing relationship with myself and Matt here bringing some uh bringing some brand strategy goods to uh to all of you. Um I just want to get a feel for where everyone is because I know that uh for those in the US it's uh it's it's early enough it's um it's morning time we're in the afternoon over here in uh in Europe and I know poor Australia because I lived there for uh for so long um you know it's it's nearly the middle of the night London Atlanta Maryland hello from India Philippines France hey I'm in France as well Maybe we're not too far away from each other. Um, wow, this is going so quick. Netherlands, Scotland, Slovakia, uh, Netherlands, Nigeria, Egypt, uh, Austria, not Australia, uh, New York, Atlanta, Georgia, Italy. Uh, so we're well represented. California, Missouri, Greece, Argentina. We have a bunch of brand strategists aspiring brand strategists from all over the world um and i'm absolutely delighted to have uh, so many of you guys uh with us today matt how are you doing my man are you on are you still on mute no no i'm off mute now yeah i'm really really well thanks so much and it's an absolute honor to be here with everybody blown away by the uh by the amount of people and and um you know hopefully uh, we can add some value, Stephen, as we go through this, and and uh, I hope I hope we we'll make the most of the next few minutes that we have together. Yeah, absolutely, and that's that's the plan. And when I sat down with Matt uh, to do this, I was, uh, you know, I was absolutely delighted first and foremost that he said he he wanted to do this. Um, and then when we sat down to to work out what we wanted to do within this um, session. Uh, the focus was was purely on what can we give the people that turn up um to take away with them that they can uh start to shift gears and start to apply things immediately so we kind of pulled away from the basics what is this and what is that and and kind of drilled down into uh you know things that started to make the difference for matt in his transition uh within his uh branding agency and then brand consultancy so I'm, um, and I've I've seen uh, some of the stuff that Matt is going to present, and I've absolutely no doubt um, that uh, that you're going to walk away with some value. Um, just to let you know, this is being recorded as well. We'll do our very best to get uh, the recording out to you. Um, questions in terms of questions, um, feel free to put your questions as we go through because you know you might find the relevant question comes up here and there. Um, but we might not necessarily jump in uh, to questions throughout the presentation. We might hold off to the end, but there certainly will be uh, a, a section for questions at the end. And just um, uh, a, a little bit of housekeeping. I'm sure everybody knows how to use Zoom at this stage. Um, but uh, but yeah, chat down, um, down at the bottom, opens up on the right-hand side, throw your questions in there, um, and you can change your screen. Um, to uh to to play around with that to make sure that you uh you can see everything that's going on um we are we are loaded with participants here at the moment matt there is no pressure whatsoever on my man so good, del del so good. Del I'll deliver as you, you. De deliver as you will but look for those of you who don't know matt um i'm 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 going to uh i'm gonna um, just share a little bit uh, about Matt. Uh, look, Matt is uh, for me one of those um, one of those influencers that is, I, I would say, a quiet influencer. He has so much influence, and he is connected with um, so many well respected people. Um, but I wouldn't call him a social media mongol. He's not on there all the time. When he shares, he shares things that he's doing. Um, and for those of you who don't don't know him, just a, a bit of a background. He founded and ran and sold his own agency, uh, built that up to, to 12 people. And, and the and the group that bought him a much bigger agency um actually 
re- ask Matt to stay on board to uh, to to continue to lead uh, the team. And from there, he assumed a, a many different um, senior leadership roles within the space of brand. And he's worked with the best of the best. He's worked with Microsoft, Virgin, Nestle, uh, a few more uh, logos down the bottom, Nikon, Boots, Specsavers. Um, and now he's an independent consultant and he works with major branding agencies, like branding agencies that I have followed and known about for many, many years. And they're engaging him as a consultant to work directly with their clients for strategy and consulting. So, you know, he, 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 he knows his stuff. He's, he's, um, you know, he's, he's well sought after and he's an in-demand speaker on brand strategy as well. So, as I said, I was absolutely delighted when he decided to uh, to share his wealth of knowledge. I'm really looking forward to uh, what he's got for us today and what he's got beyond that as well. Um, and as I said, I'm pretty confident that you're all going to walk away with something that you didn't have before and something that you will actually be able to implement to change the trajectory of your business, to move more towards a consultancy-based business, or certainly getting paid more for your thinking than the deliverables that uh, traditional agencies tend to get paid for. So with that, Matt, I think I will hand it over to you at this stage to uh, to take it away. I'm gonna shop, stop sharing my screen for the moment. Um, you all, all set, right. my man? I'm all, I'm all set. I'm going to share in just a second. I think um, I just wanted to to say thank you, first of all, for everybody for being here. The uh, the thing for me, um, it's a lovely introduction, by the way, Stephen. I could have listened to that all day. So uh, so that was it's that was, that it's was re- it's, re- it's recorded. Well, brilliant. <laughs> I'll, I'll play that back five times and just uh, remind some of the things. But you know, it sounds grand when you when you when you sort of walk through it like like you did, but. In, in reality, it's been a tough journey, you know, from where I, I've started out. My career is probably like 25 years now, probably more. Um, and uh, I'll, get, I'll get into some of the things that are, that are, that are kind of have influenced me and changed me and my perception of business, the perception of the value that, that we as designers can offer to people and uh, really where brands going in, in just a minute. But I just wanted to say to everybody, really, like, you know, here's a big question for you, everybody around um, that's listening in. What what would you say wealth was for you? Like, what is valuable to you? And I don't know how you answer that question, but when I answer it, um, really wealth to me is, is this idea of having control over my time, right? Is being able to to kind of um yes, do things and, and obviously work when I when I when I need to um and to get paid when I need to, but what but on my terms. And I think the the reality of work today is that that it's you know we can get work on our terms. And and the big question is though, but how, right? Like how could you do that? And how can you how can you get that control over your time? And that was one of the big questions very early in my career that I wanted to kind of begin to answer and believe I found in this question of of uh, of how to be a brand consultant so i just leave that with you to to kind of answer maybe you know i'd be interested if anyone's got any other alternate views on that but you know what is wealth to you is it is it is it just money well money should just be the fuel to get you somewhere right where are you going and for me i'm going hopefully somewhere i can control my time um that would be the ultimate place so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to share screen and i believe i should be able to do this and hopefully it will work. Stephen, can I get a uh, a verbal uh, acceptance that that's uh, working okay? Verbal check. You are good to go, my man. Awesome. Right. So as Stephen sort of, uh, oh, hang on. I've done the wrong thing there already. There we are. Right. As Stephen sort of mentioned, um, I didn't know you were going to do that slide, Stephen. So here's a bit of a repetition, but just to kind of, for people that have never met me before, um, I've got a background. So my background is in graphic design, probably 25 odd, odd, odd years ago now both freelancing and in agency so working on the on on the on the floor if you like on the mac floor um i found it around my own agency quite early and as steven said i sold it and um, that was a, a journey of nearly 10 years um and in that i learned an awful lot a lot of pain a lot of plus points as well but a lot of pain um and then uh, i ran a, a creative department for a much larger digital marketing agency who had actually bought my agency Um, And then um, I was headhunted by a large corporate and I was privileged enough to kind of do some brand building from within. We we rebranded part of a a global fintech, uh, which was really, really exciting, really interesting. And I ran a whole creative department for that um, that business. 
Um, and then after then, I'd become a solo brand consultant. And I realized the other day that I think I'm now in my nearly my the end of my fifth year. So I'm, I've been doing solo brand consultancy for, for a little while. But the truth is that consultants is run throughout my career, probably um, for most of my career, I was consulting um, on stuff and I didn't even realize I was technically a consultant. And um, we'll come on to that in just a minute, because I imagine a lot of people on this call and I can see a lot of familiar faces. Um, I know you're doing consultancy, you know, but perhaps you're not getting paid um, for the value that you're bringing. And I think that part of the, uh, the trick of doing consultancy effectively is knowing its value, knowing how to package it and knowing how to sell it. Uh, in a way that, that that works for you. So Matt, the designer, you know, years ago, particularly, you know, early stages of my agency life, when I was I was sort of building out a, a team or working in, in, a, in a studio, I was very much kind of about tactics, deliverables, um, you know, uh, logos, websites, uh, brand identity schemes, um, leaflets, uh, do you remember posters? Yeah, those old paper things. Yeah, we used to do those. So things like that. And, and I'm sure like a lot of people here, perhaps that's 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 maybe where the bread and butter was. But frankly, a lot of that stuff was, was short term and low fee really in the grand scheme of things. And, and, so, and that really, I think if I was honest, a lot of it was low impact work. Like it's rare, you know, we did do some big juicy projects, but it's rare that you've got a project that would really change the world and dent the universe. Um, and what this kind of, um, in, in, at least in my experience, running businesses in that space was like, was it was kind of like this, you've probably heard it before, like feast and famine. So one minute I've got tons of work on and I'm, I'm, I'm running around like a headless chicken. I'm, in, in a, I'm having a feast of, of opportunity and, and projects and, and making some money. But then that would all dry up because my focus would be on doing the work and not finding the next project. And so then I'd be in a famine situation. And so this would kind of go on and on. And it's frankly, really exhausting, really, really exhausting. And, and, and not only that, um, really what, what, what this was all about was I, I felt was taken, being taken for granted. And I felt I'd over deliver, particularly with clients who want edits after edits after edits. And, and I'd feel they're being pretty unreasonable. But because of high competition um, and because um, of a need to keep uh, chasing those projects, uh, I, I, I kind of felt I had to do it. And when I had a team behind me, it became even worse because then I had overheads that I had to kind of um, make sure that I was hitting um, in order to pay the team, pay rent, pay all that insurance, pay all the good stuff. So in, in effect, Matt, the designer, got himself into a situation where, frankly, kind of I was working for the business and the business wasn't working for me. Um, but um, fast forward now, uh, just to give you a little glimpse, Matt, the consultant, um, it's a different model, different way of thinking about business, different way of selling, different way of positioning myself, um, and uh, a different way of adding value. Because now, rather than being tactical, my, um, my kind of sell is more on the strategic front, more on problem solving for businesses, more on long-term engagement rather than kind of short-term little projects. I'm trying to get six to 12 months plus in terms of engagement, which saves on constantly trying to chase for new sales. Um, I charge much higher fees. Um, I believe the impact I have is much higher on organizations. In fact, I know that. They tell me that. Um, I have a, little, a lot more financial stability because of that, which is you know not nice for the old brain to kind of have a bit of calm. Um, I would say rather being taken for granted as kind of like, you know, designers often are like, well, if you don't do it, I'll get someone that will, you know, kind of thing. And I feel that's kind of really disingenuous. But rather than that, there, there aren't many people that can offer the value I can offer to certain organizations. And so I'm more of a trusted partner so that we try and work through situations together rather than, you know, being being kind of uh, overlooked. And I believe now I'm, I'm delivering a lot more value. So that's kind of um, um, uh, where I wanted to, to sort of share with you this, this kind of difference in, and it's often, it starts with mindset. I'm going to come on to that in a minute, um, but it's beyond the day-to-day -day kind of design. When I, when I went to college and, and, um, and learned all about, uh, went to school for those across the pond and, and you know, learn all about um, design. No one really taught me how to do the business side of things. And I, I also, like some of you, I can see some familiar friends here. You know, we go on training courses um, with really reputable um, experts in the field, and they're brilliant, and you learn a ton of stuff. You learn the methodologies, the thinking, 
But what they don't teach you often is the business side. And that's kind of, you're kind of left to your own devices to do that. And that is is, is scary. And, and what I'm hoping to do um, over the short few minutes that we have together is just give you some pointers that I've picked up over the years on you know that the business side of things really and 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 although I've got a straight arrow in reality my my arrow is a bit more like that it's it's been a roller coaster shall we say of of chaos and so hopefully I've got some shortcuts that we can uh, we can we can look at now final thing like benefits of being of of more having a mindset like I'm a consultant rather than a designer um the benefits of thinking about being a consultant if you if you do it right is you can have that high income potential because you're not necessarily fighting the competition as you were before. You get a great diversity of work. So uh, you have to kind of allow your brain to stretch a little bit. Uh, I definitely find a lot of intellectual challenge. Um, Lots of flexibility in my schedule. I have full control. Um, Opportunity to travel. I've been uh, blessed to be in Costa Rica. I've got, um, you know, uh, this year I've been in Canada. I'm hoping to go to the Czech Republic later on this year. So it's already really interesting um, potential to travel as well with with clients. Um, I think there's also the opportunity to scale differently. So what I'm going to share with you is that you don't necessarily scale by um, adding uh, new 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 aspects to your bandwidth. You know, I used to think I had to scale by adding new team members to my team. You don't have to scale like that. If you can scale by ad, by charging more, you can keep your team really small. Um, I'm a team of one. Um, and uh, But what I take home now is more in my back pocket than when I had a team of 12. So there's something there to, to think about in terms of scaling. Um, autonomy and work, you know, independence and, and uh, the ability to take control. Um, a chance to make an impact. Some of the work I do, I, you know, I've literally had people in tears and I'm sure some of you do some great work in that way. And I don't mean it in a negative way, not like crying out of pain and anguish, but like crying with joy, you know, and that, that, that's the sort of thing that really, um, sparks me. I get really, really, really thrilled about that kind of work where somebody's literally tearing up because you've helped them overcome such a big challenge. Um, there's opportunity if you go into consultancy to continuously learn, you've got to do that. Um, a chance to w- work with some really important people. And the last one, I think, is the, the most important for me, as I mentioned at the start, time for me is what I value. Control over time. I've got a lovely young family uh, for me, myself, and that's where um, I want to spend the quality time. I want to be there for my boys and my and my little girl and my wife when it matters. Um, but I also want to work. So it's kind of like, you know, it's it's having that balance between the, the, the two. Can I, can I just jump in there for a second, Matt? Sure. What, what, because... Please. What, uh, you know, something that you said that, you know, really just kind of hit home to me when when I was thinking about scaling up, I I always felt that I had to have this agency uh, vision, this vision of, you know, uh, 15 to 20 people in a creative agency, um, you know, and and, you know, different people in different departments and, you know. I know from from the conversations that that we have had, the 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 scale that you have managed to uh, to achieve just with one person. When when things started to kind of ramp up for you, how did you navigate not taking people on board so you could stay focused on your clients and still deliver value? Because that's that for me is is you know how did how did he manage to achieve that he he he's earning far more than he ever did before and he's never scaled his team he's always that says to me that you're trimming some unnecessary stuff and and you're focusing on on what's important how how did you achieve that well yeah interesting um i don't answer that by by sort of i, I i'm going to come on to that actually but I'll answer it very briefly here and then we'll we'll dig into it a bit but I think the question is is to ask yourself well why do you get paid right mm-hmm. and the answer for that is you get paid by perceived value right from 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 somebody so if I if I think Stephen you've got something to offer me and you and I say how much is that thing and you say oh it's it's x now I'm doing a kind of a, a value judgment in my mind right if to get Stephen to give me that thing is x does that, is it worth that much money for me, right, personally? So there's two things there. There's there's me, the buyer, and there's the thing that's on offer. 
and then there's the value and 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 you've got to kind of think that way now you know when you work with top tier leaders money is not the issue for them right particularly in big organizations i'm talking corporates they have a lot of money to spend on on all sorts of things in fact they'll spend more money on uh, cutting the trees in one of their offices than they will do probably on, <laughs> on the graphic design uh, that that you that you'll ever do for them at least that, in my experience when i was when i was doing that so you know the, the value is a is is an interesting thing now so therefore you have to begin to position yourself in a way that's high value um there's ways of doing that you know you can't just and and i'll say this up front you can't just suddenly go from a standing start to charging super high fees and getting um and getting you know uh, six, six six digit you know turnover overnight like this takes time it's a long term play to be a a good consultant and i would say that ultimately the uh the, the 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 question on how do i do it well that's that's what i'll share in a minute okay so how does that sound as a kind of a a, a top a good, very quick good. answer uh, try yeah that. yeah so uh, so i don't know what's to come well i've seen little little snippets but I, I didn't know that was up ahead i'm delighted that that's up ahead so keep going all right all right let's keep going and then we'll see if i don't if i don't answer it fully uh, feel free to to ask more i mean these are the questions i was hoping to answer on our on our with our time together and i know these are a big questions that folks have uh, and, and the reason I'm doing this, frankly, is that I get these questions like all the time. Um, and also, almost, Stephen, it was like a godsend when you said, oh, can we jump on and do something? Because um, what I'd just love to be able to do is like refer people who ask these questions to a resource. And, and so this gives me a great opportunity to, to stop repeating myself a little bit sometimes, if I may be <laughs> as, as, as arrogant as I can on that. But there we are. Right. So first of all, you know, these are questions that I asked early in my career. And as I say, I think I found the answers. So how can I break free from low impact work, right? This is a major question. How can I do higher paid work? Always um, interesting. And, and that's kind of hints at what you were saying, Stephen, there about like, how do you get paid more and, and not grow your team? Big question. How do I get paid higher paid work? How can I attract clients who value real branding? Um, and when we talk about real branding here, um, Perhaps it's worth qualifying. You know, I define brand as the meaning that people attach to an organization, right? It's not just the logo and the fonts. It's the meaning that customers ultimately attach to that organization. So how do you build that meaning? It's It goes beyond a logo. It goes beyond the graphic design into something a lot richer, a lot more um, emotional. Um, and then finally, what competencies do I need to develop? So these are big questions that 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 hopefully we'll, we'll touch on in the next sort of half an hour, three quarters of an hour or so. So this first one, how can I break free from low impact work? Um, why do we get stuck there? You know, there's a multiple things, right? I think the, the particularly if you're in, um, if you're in a, a sort of a tactical role at the moment, it's, it's a dangerous place to be on multiple fronts, right? We've got the rise of the rise of uh, um, um, AI, we've got, you know, chat GPT, and we've got like robots starting to create stuff left, right and center. We've got, um, we've got the challenge of, of high competition, you know, with the internet at work now, you know, it's very easy for if someone needs a, a job doing very, you know, that, that, that can be replicatable, they can easily go to, to somewhere and, and get it done relatively reasonably cheaply. So there's, there's, there's impacts and there's a problem being in a low impact space. But what stops you breaking out of that, I would say, is is I my answer to that is your mindset, right? Because what we do as designers, and, and if we're sort of sort of trained in, in, in being a tactical kind of deliverer of work, what you kind of think is, is, well, look, you know, I do what I'm briefed. So as a designer, I like to go to work, uh, for example, or a copywriter or whoever, and I like to get the brief. And one and once that brief is sent me, I'll deliver on it. Right. That's my job. My job isn't to worry about what comes before the brief. And I think that's a, a mindset that we need to start rethinking. Right. Because there there is no the value is in actually what formulated that brief in the first place. And so that self-perception of who am I? I'm a writer. I'm a designer. I'm a marketeer. I'm a social media um, you know, content uh, generator. All these things are great and needed but if you just think you're waiting for someone to tell you what to do you're going to start to struggle i will suggest and so we need to think outside of of that because you'll struggle to get higher impact work because you'll just be 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 given stuff to do what you need to do is be a little bit more 
like a consultant. And this is my definition of consultant, which hopefully will help to clarify a few things. And so a consultant is somebody paid to improve a client's condition through expert advice and guidance. And so now I don't touch the tools at all. Like I don't uh, deliver um, anything um, in terms of um, myself, like in terms of creating brand identity schemes or, or positioning campaigns or any, anything like that. What I do is I'm the expert advisor, the guide, the trusted partner, the energy, the thinker, um, the strategist to help my clients get where they need to go. Um, and so that that's a, a very big difference. It took me a long time to rethink that. I came, um, Stephen, there was a situation where I'd sold my my previous agency. I kind of came on this by accident, right? I sold my previous agency. And when I sold it, there was a restrictive clause that for three years, I couldn't start another creative design business. <laughs> and um, fast forward, I'd gone into corporate. I'd come out of corporate. I was kind of looking at consulting. Well, I wasn't looking at consulting. I was looking at sort of starting again almost. And, and I thought, oh, I'm a designer. I'll start another design company until I looked at this clause. And it was like, you can't do this for another, you know, another, another. I think there was another year on the, the, uh, the contract. Now, I took legal advice and they said, frankly, I think they, 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 they thought that it wasn't legally defendable, actually, to restrict somebody like that. But putting that to one side, I had agreed to that. Um, and so I thought, well, maybe there's another way I could uh, I could I could do things. And I, I look back at my career and I thought, where was I really adding the value? Was it in being Matt the designer or was there something else? And actually, what I found was, was where I, I, I sort of found people were most knocking on the door to, to work with me and me alone was after I'd done some workshops with them. And they really liked the, the, the thinking and the way that we ran. Uh, I ran personally ran workshops as an individual. So I thought, hey, this consultancy thing, it's not about that the 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 kind of the um, the outputs in terms of the deliverables it's about the problem we solve and so could i build a business around that and that's what i began to do around this idea of being the expert advisor and guidance um to 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 consult to, to companies i could say a lot more on consulting but just one more thing that perhaps you might think well matt that's just ridiculous like you're not actually doing anything um but my response to that is no i do do a lot you see, companies they get they need fresh air. They get they get stuck in their own uh, in their own in, in their own exhaust fumes, if you like. And particularly if you talk to leadership teams, they need to be shaken up. They need to have um, uh, different different ways of thinking. They need that fresh air. They want to go somewhere. Perhaps they're trying to get there and they're getting stuck and they're not sure wh why. And so it's they need someone to come in with no political axe to grind to help to challenge, to help to bring new ideas, to help them get to their goals. And as an ex-designer, and as I know there's a lot of designers on this call, I think we are in an amazing position because we're used to kind of um, working in the unknown, to taking a few leaps of faith, yeah, based on on thinking and, and, and risk mitigation. But we are used to kind of imagining not only the future, but we can also design the steps to get to that future. And that's incredibly um, valuable to businesses, particularly if they are truly trying to build a brand, something that's going to last, some meaning that's going to make sense in the world. And, and yes, the commercials will follow. So I think, you know, we're in a, a powerful position if you, if you have been a tactician to be able to kind of move from that into consulting because you understand there's steps and, and stages to get to a new way of, of thinking and doing things. Yeah, well, and, and look, we've we've got we've got tons of questions coming in at the moment, and as okay. I said, uh, we'll, we'll we'll cover a lot of them um, uh, towards the back end. But uh, um, Megan just had a quick a quick one uh, as you're talking about what a consultant is. How would you differentiate between a consultant and a freelancer? Because you can have a freelancer who consults and offers strategy, but how would you differentiate between the two? And and do you see yourself still as a freelancer, or do you definitely see yourself as a consultant? Well, I guess you'd have to define a freelancer, right? First, um, I, I think that they're very, very similar. I, I don't know. Sometimes I'd say I'm a freelance consultant. I don't know if that even makes sense um, because consultant, you know, you can be a consultant and work for a big firm, right? And so there's McKenzie, there's KPMG, there's massive business consultancy firms that are faceless and um, they'll do you a good job and they have, you know, tons of staff. And you can be a business analyst and a business consultant within them. I think a freelance consultant, which I guess is what I am, is 
is somebody who does that but from but me on my own and there's brilliant reasons for that to for, for people to choose that because they get if they, if you want to work with Matt Davies you can work with Matt Davies by by hiring me as an individual and there's a lot of power in that whereas I think what you would do if you went to a typical business consultancy is you don't know who you're going to get who's going to walk through the door uh, and help you through things so my sort of um, response to that is that I don't think they're mutually exclusive terms freelance and consultant mm. I, I kind of um, I, I kind of would use them into in slightly interchangeably freelance is the way you do business consultancy is 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 what you're doing for a, a client which is to improve their condition through expert advice and, gui- and, and guidance I hope yeah that's, and, and, that's and if if I, if I could just add on that um, and give my two cents as well it's all about it's also about uh, your perception in the market and how you want to be positioned and this is brand strategy 101 you know if you can yes. uh, position yourself as a freelancer well our perception generally of freelancers is that they're as much um you know the hands and the order takers as they are the the thinkers and I would say they even lean more towards the execution side of things. So a freelancer is somebody who is independent and can give you those skills, but they're less synonymous with the kind of higher level thinking um, and and the advisory services that we associate with consultants. I'd agree with that. And so, you know, if I was talking to a buyer, I would never describe myself as a freelancer because I think it has that perception. Uh, Stephen. Mm-hmm. I'd say, you know, I'm a consultant, you know, I'm I'm a, a, a solo consultant is a good way of terming it. So I think you're right. I think these words are loaded. You know, a freelancer, it's like, oh, we'll get a freelancer in as if you can get like anybody old, any old person in. And I think consultants a bit more specialized, a bit more individual um, in, in, is, is my is my personal view on that. So um, can I carry on, Stephen? Is that right? Shoot. So I just wanted to kind of finish off this question. How do we break free from low impact work? And I think this is um, the the key here, I think, is a question of who you're selling to, right? This is a massive, massive thing. So when I was doing a lot of kind of um, uh, doing my agency work and running my my creative team, we do a lot of work with kind of um, like CMOs or marketing directors, right? So these these are people who basically have... Um, have a have already set the agenda, if you like, and they just need people to execute and deliver on what they've said that they're going to do. And so you're not involved in in molding that agenda at all. They know precisely what they need, um, and so you are then hired and, and brought in to deliver on that. So so if my if my audience was a deliverer of a set project, then what that will mean is is I'm going to deliver on that. And but frankly, it's pretty low impact. You're not solving a big problem with that. But if you can flip that and start selling to a different type of person within a business or organization, say a visionary leader who wants change, but perhaps has got some some problems uh, and how to do it, who's a decision maker in the organization, um, where who who who's a buyer who has a budget and and uh, money's not the problem, then then you know you can start really thinking about helping them work out how they solve the problem, you can be the one starting to help mold and form the briefs that then go out to others. And that is where the high impact work work lies. Um, and so the key here is, is firstly to identify, you know, as you say, Stephen, it's almost like branding 101. Who, who, who do we want to sell to? Then we need to understand where do they hang out and what are their problems and how do we get in front of them in order to, to position ourselves so that we can prove to them that we're the right person to help them with that problem. It's not easy, it's easy to say, hard to do, hard to do, but there are ways of doing it. Um, I think this is the best advice I can give, um, you know, on a a short webinar like this. It's simple. When someone comes to you and says, right, I've got this brief, um, I want you to do this. You have a choice. You can go, okay, here's a quote, and then run off and do it. But you also could say, I can do that for you, but can I just ask like, why? are you doing this in the first place? And continue to ask why. Oh, we, we want to up our sales figures from X to X percent to X percent. Okay, well, wh- why is that? What's driving this? Um, and then you get into the really interesting questions because then you can start to uncover, well, okay, so what? why, why do you think this piece of work is going to solve for that problem that you've, that you've suggested? And how do you even know that that problem is the problem that the business have got? And what that starts to do is starts to reframe um, the way that the person looks at you. 
because suddenly you're not just someone who's an order taker. You're starting to unpick things. Um, and you find that there's uh, there's doors left ajar. There's always opportunities and cracks in uh, in, in people's thinking. Um, and if they're open to it, and you can start demonstrating that you'll be able to uh, to figure out, you know, what is behind some of these things, and maybe they don't even know. And that's where I kind of found that I began to do workshops because when you really question people, like why why do we even exist in the first place? You know, big brand questions. They're not really sure. You say, oh well, you know, I, I'll, I'll put, you know, I just wonder if it would be of interest to you that I can I could offer a workshop that would help you with that because I think if you had the answer to that it would mean that some of these deliverable projects that you're asking me to do you know we could make sure that we're spending the money more accurately and, and wisely uh, and perhaps there's a bigger problem behind some of this stuff that we can diagnose together um, before we kind of I just accept this prognosis so I think that's um that's my biggest tip to, to sort of start through if you are receiving briefs that are preset begin sort of the process of thinking more like a consultant by by asking why and um and and that will open up lots of and other, do you, other matt do you, do you find do you find that there's a, a of course you know you get better with this over time and and you know I, I i love this strategy and i think it was uh uh toyota i can't remember his his first name the actual founder of toyota who who um who coined the strategy the five whys um, yeah. but there there's you know there's there's a way to ask why five times and there's a way to ask why five times it's not just but why but why but why <laughs> yeah um, you gotta you gotta got kind of play back a little bit of what they've said but why have you said that you know the the, the customers don't are not really aware of that or whatever it might be yeah yeah and uh, so when you when you question uh these these leaders about why they want done what they want done do you find that any of them get defensive? They think you're challenging them, or do you find it it opens doors to other questions that you could potentially ask? What, what's the kind of what's the kind of balance there when you and and do you still get those types of of uh, business owners who who push back and and you know have the ego problem? Well, I think you're right, Stephen. It's the way it's the way you do it. I think if you're a consultant, you do have to have a lot of you have to have a lot of confidence, but you have to have a lot of humility right? That's the honest truth, because you don't know everything. And they have their context and their business, and you're an outsider, right? So what I like to do is try and unsettle a leader in a, a little bit, not ask, not ask in a in a way that makes them defensive and angry. And you can, you can tell um, if you're reading body language, well, like how, how this is going. Um, but if you're sort of asking um, why in a way that is, is that you're, you're genuinely curious, because you genuinely want to help them solve a problem and uncover a problem you will then find that it's a it's a different conversation so so for example like um you know if if somebody says to me matt i need you to come on and i'll just use a quick example i need i need some um uh some brand workshops i need three brand workshops on purpose and you say well okay i could do that for you but can i just ask a few questions because i just want to uncover the context here so so what's what's behind this you know give me the business context and then you can start asking why a little bit more. And then you can start to see what, so let's say I'm talking to a CEO and she says, well, I just don't feel my team are kind of fully aligned and I need some help getting everybody uh, in, you know, all my ducks in a row, if you like. And I had this literally happen to me last week. Uh, a chap called me um, and he said, need some workshops and stuff. So I said, well, I could do you workshops, but I want to understand why. And he told me that he was very worried that, um, that his team weren't aligned there was a, a big uh, event coming up in a couple of years and he wanted to make sure that they hit some numbers to get to that, that, that kind of event. And I said, well, look, rather than just doing workshops, we could do some workshops. Sure. But what if um, I speak to them all as individuals before we get together, because that would, that would kind of help me understand where they're all coming from. And then I can design a workshop around that uh, because now I understand the problem. The problem here isn't the brand positioning like you've sort of initially come to me with, the problem is the question of alignment of your team. So I need to understand the team. I understand, need to understand how they tick, where they are in their journey, and I can have those confidential conversations with them. And, and he was like super happy about that. So there's kind of things like that. That's, I don't know if that was the best example, but it kind of shows you that if you ask why, you can add more value. You can do more things. You can actually help diagnose the problem a little bit more. Now, I'm going to do those interviews. I don't know what's going to come out of those interviews, but I'll be coming back to that leader and saying, look, you know, you're absolutely right. They're completely misaligned. But these are the things why, why I think that's the case. 
And that might be nothing to do with their brand at all. It might be something to do with their pay package or the way they're bonused, or I have no idea at this stage. So it just kind of gives you an idea, though, to ask why you can find that bigger problem before you just accept it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Right. Um, next question. How are we doing for time, by the way? What's the... Uh, uh, we're, we're, we're good. You're, you're, uh, you're, you're on... About halfway through, right? Yes. All right. I just want to check because I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, okay. So how can I get higher paid work? Um, so we just answered, how can I break free from low impact work? And that's kind of like solving bigger problems, right? And the answer to, to how can you get paid is, is very similar. Um, I'm asked this question before, like, why do we get paid? And the answer is perceived value. Now, you know, there's, there's platforms like, uh, you know, Fiverr and um, there's now chat GPT. There's, uh, you know, the technology is insane. When I was uh, running my agency about, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, you know, we started, we, we were coding websites by hand, right? Back in the day, line upon line of, of, of HTML, CSS and all that, you know, PHP and all that. And then WordPress came along and then we saw like Wix and Squarespace. And I realized there was a tide of, of, of kind of technology coming, which would eventually wipe out the need for people like my small team to do, um, you know, generic websites. Yeah, highly specialized websites, you know, with, with data architecture and all that stuff, still a, a massive need for human uh, design. But for the standard stuff we were doing, um, no. And, and I also sort of worry that this is the case with, with graphic design, you know, particularly um, other parts of the world open up that where, um, you know, wages are not as, as high as for me in the UK. Um, uh, for you, Stephen, in Europe, you know, you can shop around if you need a, a task done. And so perceived value of, of sort of deliverables is coming down and down and down um, because you're not solving a big problem. So what we've got to do is we've got to ask ourselves the question, well, if I want to get paid more, how do I add more value to the marketplace? How can I basically uh, add more perceived value, but genuine value? And so this is where um, we use this lovely expression. Um, how do we become a brain rather than a pair of hands, right? Because if I'm hired to be a pair of hands, there's multiple other people that technically can, can pretty much do what I'm doing. But, but nobody else has, has my brain, thank goodness. And I've not got your brain either, which is also a relief to us all. But the thing is, is your brain is special. It's very unique. Um, and the way it thinks, it, it brings in your experience and, and, um, and you, you know, your frameworks and all the things that you've done in your career up to this point. And so that is, is a very different kind of way of being hired. If you're hired to be a brain, that means you're hired to solve the problem. You're hired to think about it, to find the, a solution to an issue rather than delivering something that's predefined and, and, and clearly there. And as I mentioned that, if you're in the hand space, in that delivery space, it's becoming overly competitive. It's very noisy space, commoditization, um, very difficult to compete. Whereas if you're in the brain space, if you position yourself effectively, um, you can become the only person that that, that that buyer might think of to solve that specific problem. Because in the brain space, not only is there the thinking, but there's also the way that you do it. There's your personality, there's your beard or non-beard or whatever you do. And so the thing there is that I, what I found is that people can hire consultants all the time, but will they hire a consultant that does it the way Matt Davis does it? No. Will they do it the way that, that Stephen Horahan does it? No. And so some people would be driven crazy by my style, right? I'm not for them. You know, imagine sitting next to me every Monday morning, it'll drive you up the wall. But <laughs> if, but some people love it, you know, for short bursts of time. And, and they're the people I want to speak to. Um, those those uh, companies that need that that kind of my style. And you'll be, everybody on this call will be the same. There'll be a particular style that you naturally have that yes, you can hold, hone and mold and you can add expertise and thinking and frameworks to. And that will come across particularly well for particular types of businesses, because here's the secret to a lot of sales. And that is, and, and particularly in our space, in service industry, that people buy people. And that's the honest truth. And I tried for years to create a process that was detached from me as an individual. And I tried to train people up and I was mildly successful sometimes. But when it all push came to shove over years, I realized that actually the value wasn't in the process. Annoyingly, it was in, in, in that somebody had bought into me as an individual. 
and therefore um you know almost the process was was useful but they wanted they wanted me to work with them and i think that's that's my philosophy and i think you'll find that that if you position yourself well um so that you gain trust as an individual as a service offerer that is where your success is is going to be um, yeah, so, and and, and I think I think this plays into the idea of of personality, and I speak a lot uh, about yes. this uh, because you know I'm a firm believer, and it, you know that that belief is growing, especially with with the likes of AI coming in at the moment. Uh, people buy into people, and you know if you think about just the people in your lives from your immediate family to your external family, to your friends, you know, you could probably think about 50 people just off the bat. How many of those who you, are you aligned with more than others? And why are you aligned with them more? Because we're, you know, we're all different, but we're attracted to different things. And if you're able to bring your uh, unique journey to the table. You know, it, it it might not have always been in this career. You might have had a different career in the beginning and, and you bring some of that to the table as well. You bring some of your personality to the table, maybe some colorful language to the table. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're this uh, unique product out there in the market that nobody else is is the same as. And And I really feel that moving forward with the way things are going with AI, this is really going to become more important. It's already been been important for a long time, but I think yeah. that's going to become more and more important. No, yeah, yeah, absolutely right. I think the other perhaps thing to mention <clears throat> when you think about like delivery of stuff, like you're on a shopping list, um, you're being compared against others, um, you're very restrictive, it's very competitive. Um, and you know, you, you often, at least this is what I found, it was very short term and Customers would would come, they'd buy stuff, they'd maybe send a couple of projects our way. If we did a good job, they'd stick around. But ultimately, at some point, in you know, and this happens, you've got to be you've got to be open about it. Um, they're going to be dissatisfied with something. Oh, I don't like the shade of green or something. And and you know, you you would you'd have to mitigate that, and and they would leave, right? And relatively short term. Whereas if you are a you are a kind of more of an advisor, you give ideas, you coach somebody over the long term or more on that brain side, you can really think through the ongoing relationship, the recurring revenue that you have with a customer because you're not just offering a shopping list of stuff, you're with them to really help them succeed in wherever they need to go. And, and you can stick around with them if you get the right person, the right client. I've got one client is nearly, I think two and a half years now, I'm, I've been consulting for this CEO. And thankfully, you know, they're, they're, they're still making noises like we're carrying on because we're on a big change transformation journey in their organization. So I think that's the, the other value that, you know, if you're hired to just do a few workshops, then you'll do them and that'll be it, goodbye. But if you're hired to begin to solve a problem and you can start coaching the, the CEO and say, look, we I can get you so far in six months, but the, re the reality is we need to, you know, there might be a need to roll over another six months. Let's see how we go. That's a completely different approach um, and, and one that I, I really kind of, you know, appreciate from a, from a kind of a financial stability perspective, as well as the fact that you can add some value there. So, you know, recurring revenue, increasing the customer relationship, that, that the value of a customer, I think, definitely is a lot easier from, at least from my perspective, if you sit more on your hired as a brain rather than uh, a pair of hands. So that's something to think about. And I just kind of wanted to mention the two big challenges, I think, if you sit in the hand space, is technology growing? Like you were saying, Stephen, the the, uh, the chat GPT, AI um, stuff, um, and also competition. You know, we're in a global economy now, um, really tough to stand out um, if you're in that hand space, because basically other people can do most of the time what you what you can do. Um, and so this idea of perceived value is is decreasing. So, you know, this is the question, you know, if you, if you are hired to be a pair of hands, like if everything's demarcated and, uh, you know, this idea of, of accepting RFPs and stuff like that. You know, I've been there, you know, can you do spec work, that kind of stuff. It's like to deliver on this campaign or to deliver on this brand identity. You know, you are a pair of hands. But if you are hired to solve a bigger problem, um, you can then demand a much higher fee, particularly if if, if they're only talking to, to somebody like you. And, and that's the ultimate dream, right? Um, to become known in with a particular audience, to become trusted, so that when they have a problem, they don't think about comparing you to four other proposals that are coming through. 
they they just pick up the phone and want to speak to you and that's when you 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 can you can demand the higher fees and um, when you're talking to the decision makers in that scenario so that requires some thought and uh, there's a lot of thinking there but but the big tip the big hot tip if you like to to answer this question how do i get paid to do uh, you know to, to to do higher paid work um you've got to solve bigger problems that comes with positioning that comes with your offer you know instead of offering a new logo design offer you know to to help a business stand out in a marketplace so that they can grow their revenue share um rather than you know i'm going to write some blog posts for you um talk about you know lead generation and the fact that this will you know fill your funnel with leads um you know client um maybe rather than talking to, you know as i mentioned earlier rather than saying oh i i offer workshops talk about aligning leadership teams in order to further the strategic um, goals of the business these are, are bigger problems bigger issues that need to be solved for organizations and that's how you can charge bigger bigger fees so it's a, a positioning uh question but it's also a question of actually what you're going to start delivering and how you structure that off the end any other questions on that Stephen? or shall uh, I yeah on? yeah no we've got a question from uh from jason just in relation okay. to um to the the hands um versus the brains um so just in relation to that do you find that you have to build value into your unique mechanism or the way that you solve the problem and is that positioning? Did you get the so, question? So, so ask it again. Do I have to build? Do you have value? to build build value in your unique mechanism or the way you solve the problem? So that unique experience. Do you have to build value throughout that unique experience? And is that positioning? Oh, that's a that's an interesting question. Um, I would I would say. Well, it depends what we're talking about exactly, because I would say you you always have to add value. Every time you speak to a client or a customer or a potential customer, you have to add value. Um, that if you don't, they don't start. They, you know, they, they, what, what's the point of you in their in their minds? So yes, so you, the experiences that you create, even if you're having a one to one call with them, you have to add value. You have to think. Now, is that unique? It is. I would suggest in the combination of things that you can bring to the table. But um, Stephen, uh, you know, you and I did a podcast few years ago you know a popular podcast on your on your brand master secrets um show and i remember um we got loads of great feedback because and at the time i just thought oh that's just normal right but but at the time i think i i'd said and i still stand by this that i don't often kind of promote the fact that i've got a unique methodology that nobody else on the planet has because frankly if you look at all the methodologies mine included because i have got stuff that i've got ip on but frankly it's very similar to everybody else's right we 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 learn to uh, to uh, to kind of diagnose a problem. We then define a solution, and then we help to to move towards that solution. In essence, that mm -hmm. is the model of consulting, you know, hands down. How we do that, though, I might for different circumstances, I might deploy different methodologies. Now, yes, that's unique, right? In a way, it's unique to my experience, my knowledge, the way that I would do it, and so that is valuable. But but. In, in even even on its own, are those things specifically unique? I would say not necessarily, right? But you're the one bringing them to, to the table. You're the one presenting them. You're the one putting that together as a program of work for a customer, for a client to help guide them through it. And therefore it is unique in that sense. So I hope that kind of answers the question yeah. in a bit of a complicated way. But yeah, and, and, and just to kind of add to that as well, I had a, a very interesting chat this week with, um, with an author called Alan, uh, Alan Adamson. And he specializes in experience differentiation. And this is something that I'm, uh, you know, a big fan of because we talk a lot about products and we talk a lot about, you know, being remarkable and being the best in your industry. But really, if you focus on the experience that you bring your clients through and you think about what they would get from a standard experience, then you can ask yourself the question, well, what will be different about my experience? And just using what Matt uh, spoke about as an example earlier on, um, you know, just the way he speaks with his clients and the way he positions the the value that he brings and the way he kind of drills down into why they need what they need. That's all part 
of the experience, the end-to-end -end experience and the customer journey. And if you're able to embed yourself and your own style and the way you do things into that experience, you are differentiating yourself. But ultimately, your mechanism and the way you bring people through, you have to have a very, very clear idea as to what that methodology is going to be Agreed. and then bring yourself to the table to make it even more different as well. 100% agree with that, Stephen. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, um, so I hope that kind of helps answer that. Um, let's 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 get on, and then we'll take some open questions. I've got two more questions to answer, and I want to get through it if that's okay. So let me uh, plow let on, me keep plow going. on. I, I have a tendency, Stephen, to rabbit on, and your job I'll, is to keep me under control. I'll so do. I'll free. do you. I hadn't <laughs> noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. So, um, how can I attract clients to value real branding? Oof. This is a this is a big one, right? A real big one because I get this a lot. Like, can um, can, you, can know, you do it, before you answer this? Can you define real branding from your perspective? Yeah. So so for me, as I say, branding is not a logo and fonts. That is a tactical kind of um, input. The output is the perceived value of the customer, right? And the and the meaning that that um, sorry of the, of the of the client the meaning that the customer attaches to the organization product or service that's the output right that's the result is the ultimate meaning so branding for me you could have the world's greatest logo but still have a rubbish brand because people don't don't have that meaning attached to it so branding is huge for me it, it's a much bigger kind of definition than a logo and some fonts what it what it really is is this idea that that it's the meaning that that the customer connects to you. And that therefore isn't something that in my view should be tucked down in, into marketing as it often has been historically. This is something that HR need to understand, you know, human resources, because they need to under, they need to recruit people that really believe in what this, this product service or business is all about. And so they need to have good branding. And there's a whole arm of branding that, um, that I know some on the call are specialized in, you know, employer branding, employer value proposition, employee experience i found myself in all sorts of weird situations in the past where i'm working basically with hr people to help take the principles of brand and pull it into an organization and actually design training and design um, processes around actually living the brand for an organization so you know there's there's hr people there's operations people there's um you know uh, uh customer success there's sales people obviously they need to get it there's, there's a whole raft of people that, uh, that uh, and uh, across a business that, of course, all come together to create customer experiences that will create meaning. You know, product and innovation people. All of those people need to, in my view, understand brand. So if you are involved in brand, you might be like, well, Matt, you've just blown my mind. Like, I'm involved in a small slither of that. Like, I get that. But you can still, you know, use your knowledge and expertise in brand by shifting your, your thinking from a little sort of delivery thing into a wider brain uh, uh, and, and a wider kind of strategic thinking to really work that through. And that comes back to that first question of asking why, mm. because, you know, ultimately you might find that it doesn't actually touch on the, on the deliverables that you, that you're specialized in, but you can add the value to work through that, to think about that in a, in a bigger way. So real branding for me, is as I say, it's broader than the, brand, the the logo and the fonts. It's the it's the meaning that customers attach, uh, mm -hmm. and and you've got to do that in a in a meaningful way in a powerful. Yeah, way. and and just on on strategists and consultants, uh, you know, when you talk to clients, uh, you know, you get these questions. You know, what's the ROI on this? And you know, can you give me an ROI on that? Um, and that to me is not what we sell as strategists. And Matt, you're, I love uh, your positioning on, on branding and, and the management of the meaning as well as just the meaning. I, I love how you tie the two of those together. Um, but I, I love speaking about clarity and, th and that's what yeah. we sell as strategists and as consultants. We sell clarity internally for everybody within the business to see clearly what we mean, tying back to, to um, your philosophy on that as well. And we sell clarity in the market as well. You know, this is what we do. This is, this is how we do it. This is the value that we offer. When everybody in the market is clear on what you do, they're much better positioned to be able to make a buying decision. So selling that clarity, and, and once you embrace that, you move away from the deliverables 
uh, of the logo and the website and the you know the brochures and all of that sort of stuff, if you're able to attach yourself and the value that you offer to that clarity and that meaning, then you understand and you're you're able to relate to your clients what value you're bringing to the table as well. I love that, Stephen. I 100% agree because if you were to say, well, why why do they need that clarity? I think you've answered it in, in that sentence. You know, we we're asked why again. Why why do they need clarity? Well, the answer is because you know, it's going to help them make decisions, right? From the micro decisions right up to the, to the you know, right up to the C-suite to make the macro decisions. If you have a good and powerful strategy in terms of positioning your brand and growth and success in the market, um, you can make more powerful decisions. Customers make good decisions because they can choose you. Leaders make great decisions because they know what to focus on. Hopefully employees make great decisions because they know um, why they're there, what they're trying, everyone's trying to achieve. And, and how they should behave as as they conduct themselves. So, good brand a, a good brand strategy will help everybody make better decisions. And you know, I often get the question, and I, this is you know, what's the ROI on 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 doing brand strategy? And the honest truth is, like, I can't tell you what the ROI is. I can't tell you if you spend one pound with Matt Davis, you'll get you know three pound out the other end because I'm not a sausage factory, right? I it, it's not <laughs> like that. You're not you you know, it's not it's not like that. What what I can tell uh. you this. I can tell you this, right, that every successful business that you can think of has a powerful brand strategy behind it. Powerful, right? So, and and I can't tell you whether your brand strategy will succeed or fail, but I can tell you, you won't succeed without it. So, you know, get yourself a decent brand strategy, align your team around it and 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 make decisions based on it and you will see you know you're more likely to see success so not everybody likes to hear that you know we you know that but that's the honest truth and sometimes i think you can have a bit of a bit of a laugh with a client about it like we've just done you know it doesn't work like that you know what is what is the value well you know i can tell you what the what the value would be if we don't do anything and that's epic failure and bankruptcy so you know anything more than that i think we have a success on our hands in my humble opinion anyway how do you attract as a consultant these clients that value real branding well um we've kind of talked about a few of these things you know you've got to understand your value um you know you've got to ask yourself the question well what problems can i solve you know some people can't um can't can't run workshops you know in, in the way that that i do that's okay there'll be other things you can do um but the question is is what problem do you solve so a little tip Go and start asking your customers, like, and it shocked me when I started doing it. Like, why, why did you hire me? Like, what, what is it that about me that, that meant that you hired me, you know? And the answer that comes back there is quite interesting because ultimately, they're, they're, if, they're, if you can get one that really trusts you, maybe you've been doing work with them for a little while um, and you can sit, you know, maybe after a, working with them or, a, you know, maybe you take them out for a beer or something and you say, like, just out of interest, like, you know, when it's a bit more chilled out, why did you work with me? And I got this answer back, you know, that really shocked me um, that that I was hired for for my energy. And I thought, oh, I thought I was an amazing brand strategist. Turns out, no, I'm not um, per, per se. Um, that, that is, as you sort of said, Stephen, like it, it's, it's an experience differentiator that, 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 that was it for me. So it might be something different for you. You know, maybe it is the particular frameworks that you have, but it's, I suspect if you, um, if you're, if you ask your clients, uh, even now, even if you're in that sort of tactical space, why they hire you, you might find some interesting answers to, to that. And, and that's where you might want to start building your value proposition from. Um, so you've got to understand, you know, your value to customers, who your ideal customer is, what they care about, what they need, um, their KPIs, like what are what are what are they being measured on? What's the value to them as individuals? You know, we often think about the value to the business, um, but actually sometimes it's like, um, you know, you, you, the the value to some people is like I just want they want to spend more time with their kids, and if we get this right, they can stop in you know squabbling amongst their leadership team and they can have a bit more time to do what they want to focus on or they might want to exit the business or whatever it might be but they you know find out the value to, to them as individuals you've got to build a compelling offer um and so you know this kind of touches on what you were saying Stephen. is mm -hmm. you've got to have a a map a a, a process a a way of saying to someone you're here and typically my clients start here but where but we're going to take you in this direction over here and this is the process I would take you on. Now, I might not know all the details to start with, but you need to at least come across with a structure that makes sense 
and then you can um, if you you know if you do it in, in in the way that I do it anyway that I will fill in the details as we begin the process because I can't always know all the ins and outs um, that's gonna that's, that's gonna come up as we drive down that road you know stuff's gonna jump out on top of us the car's gonna break down a few times. Uh, the kids are going to be, you know, want, want to stop and go to the go to the the services. You know, I can't tell you all the ins and outs on that journey, but what I can tell you is we're going to get there, hundred percent. And I've done it before, and we will definitely do that together. So that's that's a really important thing: building uh, a compelling offer. Um, and then once you kind of um, get that uh, down and start working on that, you've really got to look at repositioning yourself. I would suggest, or your or your business to appeal to the right people that have the problem that you know you're going to begin to solve. Um, and so um, that takes time, right? The, people think that they can do a kind of a, uh, a Google market, a Google kind of um, pay-per-click campaign and suddenly they're going to be multimillionaires. Like, I don't think it works like this in our space, frankly. Like my view is, is this takes a long time of, of trust. And so, you know, I've, I've got a little um, a hack I'll share in a minute of, of how to how I build trust, um, but it, it takes time um, to to do that. And then and then you've got to I'll, I'll come on to the hack in a minute that I'll, uh, the hot tip I'll share. But but it takes time. And then once you kind of see it working, you've then really got to plan your growth. And as I say, there's different ways to grow. Um, I used to always think, like you said, Stephen, like the whole agency thing, Matt, the designer, you know, the head of a 50 man design team, like, um, you know, look at this cool agency. And I did that for a bit or at least started down that journey. And and that is one way to scale. But it's really tough sometimes, particularly if you you're trying to create a model that's um, that kind of gives you stability. Um, I found that for me that the, the other way of scaling is to not um, not charge the same, but do more. That's the old way, like the old way I used to do it. My my ability is to charge more and almost do less, right? Which is kind of a bit of a weird mind warp. But you know that is a big question. How can I get paid more but do less? You know, so I I work about twenty hours a week now. I don't want to upset everybody, but I do, and I, I I'm, I'm paid more than when I worked. You know. Um, five days a week, you know, 10 hour days, like, honestly, it's bizarre, because money ne isn't necessarily bound up in time, as I've mentioned, money is bound up in value. And that is the the, the difference that 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 I've learned over the years. So, so if you if you can contrast between where you were, uh, you know, Matt, the designer, even when you had your own uh, kind of uh, agency to Matt, the, the, you know, the independent consultant now, when you when you think about those two different people and you think about the contrast between one position versus another position if you had to put the difference of those positions down to a single word or a short term what would that be without putting you on the spot too much well, <laughs> well i think it's the difference between being a commodity and being um something uh that's perceived as rare right that these two things are very different. Um, there's a ton of creative agencies out there. There's a ton of um, freelance designers, you know, out there, and and that's a, a, that's commodity. And you know, as I say, that's the question of being compared against lots of people. But there's even if you said, well, there's quite a lot of brand strategists out there, Matt. You know, and there's quite a lot of consultants out there. Um, but it's the way that you position yourself. So, for example, like I I did a I did a talk the other day to a bunch of legal professionals, right? Now, I'm a brand strategist talking to a whole room, 100 or so legal professionals. And, and you know, there's different ways of doing this. You don't have to do a talk. You could write an article, for example, or whatever. But the point is, is that, you know, I'm talking to people in a way that, that, that they've never considered from their, their background, their history, but they're like CEOs of legal firms. And so, you know, they have the same problems that I know I can solve and I can, I can talk to them. Now, if if I'm talking or, or speaking or positioning myself in a way that um, that is that is touching on their pain, it may not even be now, but it might be in six months. It might be in a year's time that that pain manifests itself. If I've kind of got myself in their minds like, oh, hey, there's a bearded guy and he talked about this pain that I'm feeling and he said he could solve it. They're definitely going to think about me. So that's very different. That's very different to. Um, Possibly like, you know, sitting back and saying, well, I'm a designer, brief me with my design brief, and then I'll fulfill on that. Like it's much, it's that that's a much different way of kind of positioning yourself 
you are posi- you are, funny enough i think you deliberately position yourself as a commodity sometimes uh, i did at least in my background in that space um and you know you need to you need to break out of that and stop positioning yourself as a rarity to to the point where people hopefully will be like hey like do you think you'd like to work with us like i'd really appreciate if you did like that's like that's amazing you know if you can get there and and you do that in different ways and so my hot tip is is basically a, a little bit uh on that actually it's it's this and this is this is what i believe is is sort of the secret to some of my success um you know and and, and blessings um to show yourself in action and evidence your value um so by this what i mean is is like um you've uh, here's a little story can i tell a story i'll tell a story right tell a story so we I, love stories I, I sold my agency and i joined this other much bigger agency and when I was running my agency, I was very much like, hey, the work will speak for itself. We didn't enter any competitions. We won some competitions, which were lovely. But I used to be like, kind of like the work will do the talking. Anyway, I joined this agency and the, and the, and the, the CEO of this agency, lovely chap, he, um, he was very different to me, right? He was very like uh, jazz hands. He'd go out and do loads of like public talking. He was like, he had a, a PR kind of team behind him and he was doing all this stuff and I used to be like, what on earth? Anyway, I was sat around this boardroom table one day and um, we'd won an award as an agency and I'm the creative director and he was the CEO and there were other, the other leaders there and, and he couldn't make it. He had a, uh, to, to actually do this award ceremony and we knew that there were, a speech would need to be made, right? And um, I said, he said, Matt, like we, I'd like you to go and accept the award and, and you know, you'll have to make a speech, hope you don't mind, but please could you do that? And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Anyway, this got a little bit, a little bit heated. And um, we had a few conversations subsequently. And then he said to me, I said, you know, this is privately now. He was like, Matt, what, why, why wouldn't you do this? Like, this is like such a, you know, it's such an important thing for the agency to get our name out there. And I said, well, I just think it's really arrogant, frankly, you know, getting out there and showing off and seeing how amazing we are blowing our trumpet. He was like, what are you talking about? He was like, this is the opposite of arrogance. He said, you're arrogant, Matt Davis. <laughs> you know, you think you can just sit in a room and the phone's going to ring because the world and the universe is going to know how brilliant you are. Or well, you're scared, he said to me. You're scared. You've got to get out there. You've got to show that you are good and, you know, and, 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 you, and valuable and useful in the world. Um, and, you know, and, and I was like, yeah, but what if, what, if, uh, what if they don't, what if I'm not? And he's like, well, that's the risk that you make, right? But if you don't try it, if you don't blow your own trumpet, no one else is going to blow your trumpet. So I, I got out there and I accepted the award and I did my best with the speech. But the point here is, is that it's, it's the same thing. You've got to show yourself in action. So what I try and do is, and, and if anyone follows me, and please do follow me on LinkedIn, and, and, and I'd love to answer any questions or anything if I get time as, as I can. Um, um after this but I, I love connecting with people but the thing for me is is to show that, that you'll see on my socials that I, i'm always trying to show myself doing something in action but not just that talking about the value of the thing that we're doing together i never talk about clients directly by name because of nda and, and restrictions like that but you can do it there's ways around it like i'll be running a workshop and i'll i'll be taking selfies and setting up cameras in the corner and and all sorts of things um uh, in a way that shows myself in action action and, and evidencing value so let me show you that briefly i think i've got a slide yeah i just thought i should chuck a couple of things on just uh, some recent ones i've done recently like you know this is me uh, doing stuff um on in doing workshops and so on and so forth and i'm just talking about what i'm doing why it's adding value to the client um, you know, some of the, 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 you know, I think there was one in there. I, I had a, an amazing success story where I had a, a client report after 12 months working with me, a 33% uh, growth stat, which I took complete credit for, of course. It wasn't just me. They all did it themselves, you know, alongside me, but it was amazing. And um, the other thing I, I find, Stephen, another little tip for folks is, you know, when you finished a project, even, even if you're a tactician, by the way, these things will help you, I would suggest, to position you. But even if you once you finish a project, LinkedIn has an awesome section on it where you can um, request a testimonial from somebody. And it's amazing how many times we don't do this. This goes back to if you don't blow your own trumpet, nobody else will. Right. Like ping your last client uh, that you've had a successful project with a message on LinkedIn and say, hi, Larry. Um, it's been awesome uh, working with you. Um, it's my kind of protocol to always 
request a, a testimonial at the end. I know we've had a great time. I'll be ever so grateful if you could, because it really helps me out. Thanks so much. Love, Matt. Kisses and hugs. Now you do, no, don't do that. <laughs> you do that. And what you find is, and some of them will be like, not do that. But what you do find is, is that some will. And so what this does is it builds up your reputation. It's, it, it then becomes a long-term play. And this is what I, I'm saying. You know, you might look at my stuff and, um, you know, my relative success and think, well, flipping it, look at this guy. He's, he's, you know, I couldn't do that. You can do it. Anyone can do it. But it takes time because you basically have to build this layer on layer slowly over, over in my case, over, over some years. Hopefully you can do it in a lot quicker. I think I don't think it took me years to get to a successful position. It took me, you know, a good six months plus. But yeah, and then you've got to keep it going. And, and the key here is that you you really need to, um, to, to, to not, I mean, my strategy, I'm not highly glossed. You can see from these pictures, like these are all really authentic. They're the genuine things. I'm, I'm often posting these on a train on the way home. Um, anybody can do it. If you're, a, if you're a tactician or a pair of hands, or if you're a brain, you can do this. You've got to blow your trumpet, right? Because, you know, no one else is going to blow it for you. And, yeah. um, and and if you know the value that you want to bring and, and the type of clients you want to attract, that can really help you position those types of posts in a way that, that this is my aim, is so that when someone picks up the phone or not, they don't pick up the phone, they, they might message me or ping me a DM on, on, on socials. They're not asking, Matt, um, you know, um, how much does this cost? You know, or, or, or here's an RFP. That isn't the conversation. The conversation is, is, Matt, I've got this problem and I really hope that you might be able to squeeze me in. And that is when you know that, that, that you're onto a winner. So it's a different, a different way of thinking, uh, a different way of positioning yourself. Definitely not commodity based, very unique uh, and different. Final, just, final just, just, just yeah. jump in with a, a, a yeah. quick relevant, relevant question there. And, and we'll just keep an eye on the time there because we need to move into Q&A after this. Uh, Richie, Rich, Richie Meldrum uh, was asking because uh, he noticed that you don't actually have case studies on your website. Now you go to your LinkedIn and it's, it's jammed with testimonials, but on your website, you don't have case studies. I think you touched on it a little earlier. Is that got to do with NDAs up at the top, uh, up at the top echelons of 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 brand? Yeah. Well, it's very interesting. Um, great question, right? Really good. And and um, I okay. The classic thing as a designer is, and this was my mindset, is that you have a portfolio. Like, here's my portfolio. You're trained to show your like. When I went to went to through the education system, you literally did a lesson where you had to compile your portfolio and come in. You remember those literal po portfolios and show it off, like, and talk it through. Whenever you went for an interview, you'd do that. So you're kind of preconditioned to think that that's how you need to demonstrate your worth. But um, when, as I say, when I sort of uh, I sold my business and I I wasn't allowed to talk about any of my past clients because of that because there's like restrictive clauses about that I, I I started again and I couldn't talk about design right so it's like huh that's really frustrating and you know what I found I found that um, if I didn't have my portfolio on my website I wasn't being positioned anymore as a pair of hands right a lot of agencies will offer strategy. And they will still have their portfolio. And you got to ask yourself the question, and you know, different for different agencies. But um, often people are still coming for the executable. They see the nice logo design and they come to buy that. They don't come to buy the the, the working out and the thinking. Now, so so don't. This is. I mean, this is highly risky. So I'm not saying definitely do this straight away. Have a think about this. But 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 consider this. What would happen if you removed your portfolio from your website? Right. Would that uh, and you changed your messaging to say, I solve problems. I'm a strategic thinker. Now, that is bold. It's brave. Uh, for some people, it's nigh on impossible to get their heads around. But but what you'll find is, you know, try it. Try an A-B test sometime. Right. And see. Mm -hmm. uh, try it for a month um, and see see what happens, because I bet you any money, the type of inquiries that start to come through are very different because they won't be asking you about the output. They'll be asking you about, um, you know, in terms of the deliverable, they'll be asking you about how do you solve these types of problems. And so I, I found that after I did that, um, there was no need. Now, I do have, I don't tend to do case studies. I don't like, I don't really like them. But if I tend to talk to leaders one to one, -to -one and show and show myself in action, 
And by doing things like this, it's not even a question of, you know, can you do some of this stuff? It's like, when can you do it? You know, it's, it's, it's a different, it's a different way of proving yourself. I don't have to have a portfolio anymore, thankfully. Um, but what I have to do is show that I can do this on a regular basis. So I have this thing and, and Stephen, you and I have talked about this in the past. Um, what I find is that, that you get a lot of silent watchers, right? Mm. So someone comes across me and they might like me or follow me on LinkedIn or Instagram or something. And they haven't got the problem that I'm talking to there and then, but they will be watching like hawks. And so sometimes I've done, um, I've done, uh, I don't know, you know, met somebody and uh, just, you know, they've started following me on LinkedIn or whatever. And it might be six months to a year later when they approach me, but when they approach me, they're not, they're not asking to compare me with anyone. They want to hire Matt Davis, right? And, and that's because of this type of effort that I put into social, social media and proving uh, showing showing my worth uh, and, and and you know demonstrating the value, showing myself in action. So I don't know if that answers the yeah. And and and, and look, ninety ninety seven percent of people who come across you aren't ready to buy at the moment. That's ninety ninety seven percent of any given market. And I think a lot of us spend our time trying to appeal to that three percent and you know to to get those who are ready to to buy right now but if you consider and yes this is something that we've spoken about in the past silent followers um so don't get disheartened if you don't have a ton of people commenting on your stuff just put it out there because there are people who are sitting on the sidelines who will never comment who will never like and who who just who just observe and take action and, and a huge amount uh certainly uh from your side matt of uh, your business come from silent followers who aren't yeah. the type of people to be scrolling linkedin you know liking this and emojiing that and uh dropping a comment here and there but when they're ready to do business they they send a a simple message and away you go so keep in mind those uh those silent followers and you know give value for them you know and don't be disheartened by uh you know by by social media metrics just just remember that you know those silent followers are are in the background and business a lot of business can come from them it blows my mind that you know you you'll uh you, you, you'll be on social media, you'll be doing a few posts or articles or whatever. And no, like uh, my target audience is like maverick CEOs, right? They don't comment on stuff. They're, they're quiet. You know, they're, these are very senior people. But then I'll meet them, like maybe, you know, we'll be at an event or uh, having a beer or I'll see them, you know, maybe I'm six, two months into a six months engagement and I'll see the CEO and they'll be like, oh, I really loved your post on da 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 da. And you'll be like, that's so weird. Like they've never commented, never liked it at all but they're watching. And I think you're absolutely right, Stephen, like people are not ready to necessarily buy. It can be six months later that they're ready to buy, but they're watching all the time. So bear that in mind, talk to the right people, even if they're not sort of commenting and and and, and liking. And I'd say the best people don't, right? They're just completely, <laughs> there's, there's one client of mine, he, he's the, he never comments on anything that I do at, at all, but he's a massive fan of mine and, and recommends me, you know, to, 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 to his friends and, and, his, and his peers and his colleagues. So you know, it's one of those things. Social media is a way of broadcasting, but you may not necessarily always get that back directly, I would suggest. All right, final quick one. I'll just, I'll do this real quick because we said we'd do three, these four questions and, and I will. Um, you know, if you're sat there thinking, well, this is lovely, this is great. Well, what, what would I, what kind of skills do we need? What kind of competencies is probably a better way of putting it? Would well, I it's a, well, it's not typesetting. I know, I'm sorry about that. That's me. There's a double space there. The, the, for, for all the, the designer, designers in the, the room designer in me is running around going i'm not a designer anymore so leave me alone um but um there's another part of me just just crying right now but move on so um let's uh let's go into this bit so i just i just think that there's some core things that you might want to um consider i mean there's uh, there's other things as well you need to, frankly as i mentioned you can't go from a standing start and, and run into consultancy like this isn't for somebody who's just finished university right you need some experience you need some 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 thinking behind you you need to have a point of view but on top of that you need to have these kind of these kind of competencies i think you need to be super collaborative and and have that ability to work with multiple people um at any one time you need to be articulate this is really important um, you need to be a visionary. You know, designers are used to thinking into the future and working that way forward. You need to be hyper empathetic. Like you need to put yourself 
in multiple people's shoes at any one time like say if you're running a workshop you need to understand how they're come uh, you know where they're coming from and not just simply like have your own view and that that's it you need to listen and that goes on to the next one you need to be curious right i love being curious i love going into a new business i find it super fascinating and i and i love to to learn and to think things through and to challenge positively uh, in a way highly creative you know you need to be able to problem solve and think things through and if you know, if I find that at least if I identify a problem, I might not necessarily know the answer, but I might be able to find a book or somebody else that I can bring into the project to solve the problem. And that's OK. You know, that that kind of creative problem solving situation. I think you need to be influential, um, particularly, um, you know, if you're working in a business and you're trying to get people along uh, on a journey. That's super important to, to really confidently lead um lead people forwards obviously if your main sponsor your main customer is is uh is kind of uh, uh on board with it you know once you get them on board then you've got to help them get everybody else on board and finally i think this is you know super important uh, for anyone in business you know you've got to be driven you know this isn't for lazy people this is uh this is not for people who uh you know want to try it for 10 minutes this is for resilient people and I'm sure everybody on this call is, you know, otherwise you would probably wouldn't, you know, you probably all got a lot of these traits because you wouldn't be on a call like this if you didn't. Um, now, you might look at those and think, yeah, you know, I'm pretty much OK on all of those. Well, you know, you might want to um, if you don't feel you're competent in some of those areas and don't take that the wrong way, you know, that might be something that you want to look look at, you know, and you can get training in these in these areas to kind of complete it and, and to get better at it. Um, and so, and 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 and, 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 that's that. a, and that's a good point uh, to just sorry to, to jump in yeah. there, um, because. You know, when you when you go down this road and you look at these um, at, at these competencies, you know, a lot of us are very self-critical as well, um, you know, and, and you know, you, you might not give yourself the, the credit that, that you deserve. or You might think to yourself, well, I can't be that. Um, but yeah. Matt, wouldn't you say um, that there are at least one or two of these where you know going back maybe five ten years you would not have have said that one of these were were a core competency oh, all of them all, of, all i would say <laughs> i'd say i'd say I, I going back you know 10 years i i don't think i would um necessarily uh you know let's just take curious right i'd just accept the brief right i wouldn't ask the questions that need to be asked um would I was I always articulate? No, I I hate speaking and talking and doing stuff like that. There's skills I had to learn there. You know, what was I always collaborative? Uh, no, again, you know, there's there's ways of 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 kind of being more agile and swarming on projects. There's books to read. There's people to connect with. There's thinking that you need to develop to become better and and always become better. So you know, you've got these competencies. If you couple that. Also, with the knowledge of brand and, and think, brand thinking and techniques and methodologies, couple that with some experience and you're unstoppable. But yeah, and I would even say now, Stephen, to be honest, there's areas in these competencies I look at and I think, mate, you still need, you know, slight imposter syndrome. It's like, oh, you sit here and talking to all these people and say they've got to be like this. Well, I, I still need to improve in some of these areas. Don't get me wrong. You can always improve. And so that's my final hot tip. You know, go to work on yourself. Never stop. I'm always reading personally. I'm always trying to learn. I come across stuff in businesses I've never heard of before. Phrases. I was working in, yeah, in, in a company and they use acronyms all the time. It's like, I need to learn this stuff and I need to understand it. Techniques, um, methodologies, you know, always be on, on, on the collection of, of knowledge and go to work on yourself, go on training programs, improve yourself and, and, and basically get yourself, you know, up a level. Always, never, never, never stop progressing, you know, is my, mm -hmm. is my kind of philosophy. And to quote you, Stephen, I think you once said, um, never, um, never assume you have arrived. Um, which I think is a lovely little way of uh, of, of kind of uh, rounding that off. So, yeah, anything you want to sort of say there before we kind of uh, we start to think about um, winding things up? Yeah, look, absolutely, and uh, you know, I, I I think going to work on and look at the end of the day, we've got um, you know all of these people turning up at um, whatever hour it is is at the day. You know, um, I, I think desire to work on yourself and improve is is kind of not a question for for the people who are uh, sitting here in the room but certainly being able to identify the areas where they are your strengths and lean into those and identify the areas that you need to catch up on and invest in yourself 
in those then you kind of you know you 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 rise together with that and you know i really think that when you have that level of awareness about yourself that is a great starting point to to know where your strengths are and where you can lean into and possibly that becomes part of your positioning strategy and where you you kind of uh you you invest in yourself and raise the levels of those skills to be able to to be a better version of you and we're all working we're, we're all on the same journey um uh, anyway of of working towards a, a better version of ourselves but yeah look matt thank you so much for uh taking the 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 time to bring us through that if we were in a room i'm sure everybody would give you a a, a standing ovation yay matt um we have questions and um i i haven't uh, been interrupting you too much because um you know i i, I know the the flow is is super important so i want to dive in with a couple of of questions i've got questions here but i would like to see if we can make it a little bit more interactive so i'm going to test this out if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't um and i'm going to put creston bestman on the spot are you still in the house are you still in the house creston um you had a question oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll mute yourself um and uh, you had a question early on about deliverables for math yeah yeah because i wonder um if he just just um consults um how does he what does he supply to the client does he does he do presentations and the research does he put that all together and what what can I have in my hand? Yeah. So what 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 are the deliverables of what you offer, Matt? And uh, the outcome that the client gets, uh, you know, because a lot of us get stuck in, well, where's my book or where's my digital files or where's my logo? You know, that yeah. that kind of tangible thing at the end. What 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 is it that you deliver? No, that's a, that's a that's a great question. Um, it depends on what the problem with the client is, right? But I'd say typically, what I I, I go in with is a, it's a strategy document, it's a positioning document um, that will be uh, kind of built together with research. Yes, like you've said, with um, with workshop outputs and analysis, and with um, with you know it's a collaborative process often. So it's kind of a, a co co written, co built. I will lead the. The, the structure of it but we we refine it together so ultimately that's the initial start and then it depends what problems and challenges that they have that they might need to to implement so it the, 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 it's a different way of thinking of it i'm not selling a strategy document i'm selling the uh the the, the firstly the the understanding that the diagnosis of of the challenge and then solving the uh sort of delivering on the definition of the solution, which I'm working with them to kind of come to, but I'm giving my my advice. And then I'm actually helping to them to execute it. So I might own the plan or I might support the plan to execute it. So these are not, um, it's not like here's a product, I'm giving you a product. It's more like I'm advising you to get to where you need to get to. And that, that that's, so it's a little bit murky in that regard, but usually it's a strategy document um, within, you know, within six months. Uh, and that's usually backed up by, by um by research and I, I i guess i could talk more on that but hopefully that i i to... yeah and 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 to to kind of just clarify when you say uh you help them execute you're not the type of guy to get into the back end of facebook ads are you oh no way so, tell, so, tell, tell so us what... about your your execution well i think um there's an what you've got to do is you've got to be the connector right? You're the advisor. You come with a network of people who are experts uh, that you've worked with before that you know are brilliant and that you can, um, you know, connect with the client. And so I call it the Hollywood model, right? So so rather than, um, you know, I used to think I used to have a build an agency that did everything. Now I don't. Now I say, no, I don't do anything. Uh, what, but what I will do is I know people who know people and I'll be able to connect you with a, an awesome team um, or, or an awesome kind of series of partners who will deliver on the strategy that we formulated. And so that is also part of the service. So to be paid to be the, the, the puppeteer rather than the puppet is, is an amazing privilege. And so what I will do is, let's say, for example, is a brand launch. Um, you know, we'll need an events company. We'll need, we'll need to create the brand identity. We'll need some research. We'll need um, to verify a few things in market. We'll need um, the presentation is done, the audio video done, whatever it might be, you know, I will help get that 
to um, to a point where it's high deliverable, um, but without any risk to me, because what I would do is introduce the client to people I trust. They would then, um, you know, obviously kind of uh, pitch to do that work or quote to that work. Sometimes I can negate all of that because they just trust me. And I can say, look, work with work with Roger. He's awesome. And they will um, because of my word, because they trust me. And we can get things done, you know, quicker. Um, and uh, and everybody's a winner and everybody has skin in the game. So we, you assemble the team, the Hollywood model, to get the job done. Everybody has skin in the game. And then you uh, that team then d- dissolves and, until next time. And that's kind of, but, but I'm the... The mover and the shaker in the middle of that does that does that make sense yeah ab- absolutely um now we we do have a, a a few more questions but uh before we jump into those questions you had uh one or two two more slides um that i that i yes we today. must get into this because folks will love this um i hope um so let's uh let's share this because it's some big news folks there we uh, go can you, oh hang on you can it's a bit weird there we are try that is that better yeah. That's 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 working. As you can see, Matt and I are not your typical webinar salespeople. <laughs> we, we're, we le- we're like the opposite of that, aren't we? We we left out at the end that there's uh, there's a next step to this if if you want. But essentially, over four weeks, uh, we're diving into the brand consulting accelerator, and Matt's he's going to dive deeper into all of these different areas. Matt, do you want to take us through the the four week um, uh, program and 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 what you've got kind of lined up there yeah sure so the the first week is all about developing your your kind of uh competencies like we've touched on this already and so this is really about self-reflection it's really about understanding the value and the worth that you can offer the marketplace and so we've got uh in each of these kind of days as it were we've got um we've got a workbook we've got some uh methodologies and thinking and, and some tips to help you shortcut the uh the rather long and big draggled uh process that i've had to go through over the years and hopefully it'll save you a lot of time and effort to to, to position yourself as a consultant if that's what you want to do so the first one is about understanding that value that you personally that you as an individual you as a company can can begin to offer as a consultant as a brain rather than a pair of hands and then we've got to kind of construct your offer. So the next sort of step here is, is like a, um, you know, to, to that to that question we had before, you know, what are we offering? What are we going to deliver? And how are we going to do that? And so that's, there's loads of stuff I learned over the years in regard to that. That's super powerful because you need to really understand that in order to, to be successful. Otherwise you'll slip back into having to deliver wow. Um, you know, tactical things again and again. So how you structure your offer is is, is crucial. So there's lots of secrets in that one. And then the third one is, is um, well, once I know what I'm, uh, you know, the value I can bring, I know the, the offer that I'm going to start offering to folks. Um, how do I position myself? And what are the activities and the thinking that I need to bring to bear? What are the routines I need to do on a regular basis to to reframe and build that business. What do I, you know, how am I going to set myself up? So that's week number three. We're going to talk about that uh, and give you some some tips and, and thinking and some exercises to do there, uh, and so, and some and you know some tasks to do, frankly, so that so that you can succeed. And then finally, um, it's about okay, well, how do I expand? How do I continue to increase the value of what I'm offering um, in a way that that works for me? So I'll be sharing, you know, how I did that. Um, I've got a technique called the lily pad technique, which is where you kind of leap from client to client um, depending over time uh, to to get to where you need to get to. And and we'll talk about that uh, on on the sessions. And I think the key thing here, Stephen, is that that we've designed this accelerator program so that it's our our ambition to help you get your first consultancy client, um, you know, within the, the period of the course, if we can. Now, Obviously, we can't 100% guarantee that um, because everybody's different, but that is our ambition. And, and uh, there's no reason why um, this couldn't, that couldn't be the case for you. If yeah. You and if you follow this course. And, and the, the, really, the, the curriculum for this is, uh, is really, really good. I mean, it, it really kind of opens the lid on Matt and the things that he does within his business that, um, you know, obviously has taken him you know uh, the last 10 years to acquire the that understanding of how to do these things and there are there are sections in this where even if you take that away it's uh you know it's it's uh it, it's it's worth it just for that so you know i was i was, uh, I was so impressed when i sat down with, with, with matt to realize what he was going to co- uh cover 
uh, on this, but we did decide that uh, it was going to be a limited series. We want, rather than kind of uh, shoot it as a as an on demand program, we wanted to do it as a live event, and uh, for that reason, we've made it a limited series, and that's limited both in uh, you know the 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 time for the um, the the program, and it's also limited with the seats. You know, as I said before, you can see by 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 the way we forgot about the the product at the end that we're not. Uh, we're not typical salespeople and we're not doing, you know, um, you know, fake scarcity. There are anyone who tried to get into the uh, Brand Master Bootcamp uh, that that I ran, um, you know, that I launched going back uh, maybe seven or so weeks ago. There were a ton of people who wanted to get into that and they couldn't because it it, it literally was limited. We, we only want a certain amount of people in this because we we want a relatively intimate group of people to be able to go through this together um where where people get to 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 chat and and to 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 ask questions directly with Matt speak to Matt and and then have access directly to Matt through the the support as well for 30 days which is part of um which is part of uh, what's what's being offered so i've dropped the link uh, into the chat um for that you can see that on uh, the screen as well, but guys, like the, you know, this is um, if you do want to to um, to be part of this, jump in because you know once we we stop the enrollments, we're not doing another one of these for the time being. So uh, that's it. That's 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 pretty much the sales pitch uh, done and dusted. And yeah, look, we we really do want to focus on uh the quality here for this uh this event so i'm not going to bang on too much about um the the program itself i've got the link there you can you can check that out um i'm going to jump into uh to some questions that we we missed along the way matt did you have anything to add on that um or are you happy for me to jump into questions no I, i'm super happy I, I will have to bounce in a minute funnily enough i have got, i've got another call in a, in a second from a from a client so I'll, I'll have to take that um but yeah no i don't have anything i i think um i think the value here is is like as i said at the start like there's a lot of programs out there will tell you they'll teach you about brand strategy this is not that kind of program this is not gonna we're not gonna teach you about the frameworks of, of brand strategy what we're going to be looking at is more the business side behind positioning yourself as a consultant right and that's absolutely you know we want to make that super super clear and um, we'll touch on some of the things like you know how i do things and and some of the methodologies but mainly it's like you know i'm assuming everybody coming on will either uh, be a strategist or be able to learn about strategy um elsewhere and we can recommend books and so on what this is about how do you make money in this space uh, you know good money uh, from being a consultant and i'm happy to share you know, you know, all, all of my tips on that uh, with you all. But as Stephen says, I can't do it multiple times. I'm, I'm, I'm super busy most of the time. So uh, I, I'll, uh, it's okay. exhausting as well. I've been putting a lot of effort into this. So uh, I hope, I hope, uh, I hope, you know, people that come there, I'm sure they'll find some, some value in it. Okay, guys, for uh, there, there are a ton of questions here, and we're not going to be able to, uh, to get through all of those. Uh, feel free to send your questions through to support at brandmasteracademy.com. Um, and I'll uh, I'll do my best to um, to answer those or to 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 get Matt involved. Matt, do you have time for a couple of questions? Hit me with two. Hit me with two, Stephen. Hit, hit you with two. Okay. Um, we have uh, both Carney uh, Goldfield and Hootie uh, Hootie Blotch. Sorry if I'm if if I'm not pr pronouncing that correctly. They had relatively a, a, a similar. Uh, question. So, uh, so I'll couple these together. How do you get your foot in the door? And then once in the door, how do you explain uh, to the to the client that they need a brand workshop? Hmm. Okay, foot in the door. The key here is to, um, it's not hard sales, right? That is not how you do it. All of my business, all of my sales have not come from me kind of doing hard sales. It's often through um, meeting people and being very authentic and, gen and genuine. Um, be that at events, be that through speaking, be that through my, uh, you know, them coming across content online, be that through um, people recommending me, right? So I think people buy people. So that's important to remember. So that's how you get your foot in the door. Um, if if uh, if someone wants to hire a consultant, they don't Google a consultant. That's not how it works. They ask their buddies, they ask their friends, they ask their peers. So you need to be on that radar. 
um, in that space in order to do that uh, and to get those sales. The second thing was, what was the other sort of te- connecting question to that? It was, uh, it, it was, how do you explain uh, you why, why, why they need a brand workshop to be able to bring them through that process? Oh, well, I may not know if that's what they actually need. So, mm-hmm. you know, uh, going back to that point, I would listen to what they have to say. Um, and then I would offer, you know, a, a, a series of workshop, a workshop or whatever it is, depending on the need, depending on the problem. And, you know, I might actually offer that in a proposal and we'll go through proposals in the in the process um, that, that, that it's likely that that's going to happen. But you have to position it in a, in a way that's kind of like, well, I don't know for sure that that's what you're going to need. Um, and that's, you know, and, and it's got to be super flexible. So what I'll teach you is how to create a flexible working relationship with these individuals in order to kind of um, make, you know, highly paid in order to make sure that you are adding the value that they actually need rather than you're selling them something that you have to deliver on, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, We also have one from uh, Gabby uh, Forcada, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, What resources would you recommend to develop critical thinking skills? It's a good question. Oh, that's a brilliant question. Critical thinking skills. Um, So, uh, I, know, I know, I know, I know, I know that you have a, a handful of of go to books that I've heard you mention in the past. Yeah, uh, I do. I, th- I think, I think. Okay, so I think it's about asking the right questions helps to bring the, the critical thinking out. So you know, um, there's a, I've got a library of books. We'll be sharing them on the course. Um, but basically, what we're what what you what you need to do to critically think effectively is to ask the correct questions. Um, to the right type of people. So one quick tip, for example, is um, tell you know tell tell the the buyer that you want to verify that you know whatever they've said. And you know one thing is like how, how can I ask just two customers? Uh, can I have half an hour with some of the, two of your top customers just to verify some of the things that you've been thinking and also to pick their brains because frankly you know you you've said that but how you know what i'd like to do it i wouldn't be doing my job if i didn't verify your assumptions or or the or where you've got to and um, even if just two customers and they're not likely to grant that to you i mean better if you can say well can i do that with 10 customers and and you know i know that might take a couple more months but at least we'll be able to verify what you've said and and so to do consultancy well you have to have that ability to to ask the right questions and to you to to leverage what you've actually heard from from customers or staff or other leaders in order to to kind of um, to be critical about particular things. I hope that kind of helps. Yeah, yeah. We we've um, we've got. Uh, I'm I'm going to be bold, Matt, and I'm going to squeeze uh, two quick questions in um, after this. Uh, will you be uh, Sid? Asked, will you be delivering this through uh, interactive workshops or lectures? I could probably answer that. We're going to be delivering it in a live setting like this, but uh, the difference is that on the back of that, there will be uh, there will be assignments that you have to do. There'll be tools for you to take away and go and apply. The end goal is to get you prepared for consulting and to try and get you your first client within those four weeks and to give you the tools then to be able to deliver for that client as well and set you off on your your consultancy journey so i hope that answers uh that question uh richie uh richie meldrum um do you get a cut from your recommendations to roger etc so do you get a cut um when you uh pass people off you know what's your what's your networking situation like and do you have uh, a referral network set up where you get uh kind of residual income from those networks um, that is a model, but frankly, if you're being paid enough, you don't need cuts from recommendations. So, um, oh, nice. <laughs> I, I don't mean it in a bad way, but that's the truth. And the second thing is, is I think it kind of, um, you know, I'm quite an honest person. So, if a client said to me, "Do you get a rec- you get a cut?" I'd feel compelled to say, "Yeah, I do." And then that kind of destroys your complete. Your, your your reputation in in my view because now now they think that you're incentivized to in, to basically pass on your mates to them that's not how it works i recommend the people i think are brilliant and will do the right you know the right job for what we need to be done and solve the right problem and and i think that's um that's the best way and and if they're paying you well that's what they would expect to do is is my view okay beautiful last question i promise 
your client's going to hate me. Gail Gonzalez, uh, I feel like people are always searching for the doers, deliverables, and they don't realize that they even need brand strategy. They think they know what they need. Therefore, in terms of my own branding, how do I speak to their pain point? So this is this is really about digging deep into the into what they really need versus what they think they need. How do you do that? How do you extract that? Yeah, so, so it goes back to that point, asking why. But I would also say perhaps your positioning is off. Like if you want to talk to the people creating the briefs rather than the people giving the briefs, you know, you need to reposition, uh, re, you know, rethink about how you're talking to the market, rethink about, you know, your offer, um, because it sounds like you're, you are receiving those, you know, those briefs and the people you're talking to, they don't know they need what you can offer. It means you're talking to the wrong people. Okay. Sounds good. Um, Matt, what time is what time is your uh, your is your client waiting for you at this this point? They're waiting for me right now. I've already okay, got a very I'm, short. I've 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 been bold. I've been bold. All right, we're uh, we're gonna let you go. Um, guys, thank you so much for your time, everyone. Guys, this uh, this is gonna be on replay as well, so we'll send that out again. Uh, but as I said, there are only limited seats for that limited series. So if you want to get involved and if you want all of those tools, and as I said, uh, there will be assignments that you have to go and, and take away and do um, uh, during the week. And then you you come back and you implement uh, all of that. And then, you know, as I said, I, I've been through the curriculum with, with Matt and I've seen just a few of those. If I could have implemented some of those in my business early on, and and taking those those kind of nuggets of gold away, uh, you know, there there, there are so many. Um, uh, really, there there are so many. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to sell this, but if you do want to go in, down that road of consultancy and you do want to fast track um, that journey, then I recommend getting yourself uh, involved. If you've got any questions about the the event at all, uh, feel free to uh, feel free to hit hit me up uh, support at brandmasteracademy as I said, keep an eye on your inbox over the next uh, couple of days and I'll, I'll shoot out this replay um, and you can watch that back as well. Any questions that weren't answered, feel free to send them through to me as well. And with that, I will let you go. Thank you all so much for uh, for tuning in from all over the world. I really appreciate you guys. All the best. <laughs>